likely than really grabbing the bit and driving down. That'd be a little bit too too much contact. The other side too light, where sure he's not bothered by it, but he's also not really paying attention and or respecting that. So you have to try to find that ideal contact. And it can change from moment to moment. So what might be fine for five strides, and the next five strides might not be fine. We just have to be able to teach ourselves to be aware to the feedback that the horse is giving us and make adjustments accordingly. Good, so I like this right now. I'm trying to keep them in this bound so I stay light for the time being. Just enough contact that the rein isn't loose. That we call passive following rain. Like the rain was a piece of hair from their tail, and if he pulled too hard and the tension got too much, it snaps and breaks. Just nice, light, smooth. Pattern. There's nothing wrong with, with um, riding any sort of pattern, really, but we want that to make sense. So, for now, it's fine. Sometimes for the, not saying that this is his case, but for the younger, greener horses, we, we add more straight lines and less turns. But, I'm not saying that he needs that, I'm just pointing that out, that the pattern we ride makes a difference to where we are in the, in the training ride and where they are in general in their training. Obviously a horse that's terribly unbalanced probably shouldn't be doing like, you know, six to ten meter circles if they can't barely keep themselves together, right? So, Find a spot and change direction. Look a little bit the same idea the other way. Nice, soft, passive following rain contact so long as he continues to carry his balance. If it starts to change drastically, we might change our plan. But for now, I think it's going well, so just keep, keep doing what we've done. Going along and, and you're doing a nice job of keeping that contact nice, soft, but consistent. And he takes a few strides and really speeds up. And that contact can change. Give it a half off for a moment, but then we're trying to get back to that base, that one, that unit of the A that was making the most sense. So if, if you're going along here and every once in a while you need a minor correction or the rain gets a little bit tighter, I mean that's not the end of the world, but that would be like as he came there, 
not adding more grain contact necessarily, not throwing it away, but adding a little bit of leg to say, come on, back to where we were. Good. Now as you're going along, if you start to feel that, that this has been nice, it's, nothing's getting more complicated, then it, once it's that consistent, you can start looking to add a little bit to that. So maybe that add would be, can I take, well, let's put it on a scale of, of one or zero to ten. Zero being no contact, ten being the hardest you can ever imagine being on the mouth. I'd say probably for the work I've wanted you to do, we're in the, the range of between zero and at most two. So whatever number you think that contact could be, and it doesn't have to be an integer, it can be fractions, adding a little bit more now. Just a tiny, the tiniest bit more and seeing like checking, is that still okay? What I started to work a little bit today on was actually pushing a little bit more solid into the hand and asking him to come deeper. Because I felt in the past few rides the, the balance has been better. He hasn't been lugging me straight down and forward. So now I'm wanting to push into the bridle a little bit and ask him to come a little bit rounder. So the process here now is, like I said, just that little bit more. And as soon as he yields to that and maybe comes a little rounder or deeper, like he has a little bit now, softening the hand as a reward and showing him that that door downward is open again. And for now, just the, the idea, I think I mentioned this once with training, just hand without leg. So when you get, when you get that result and he relaxes or wants to come a little deeper, giving just in the hand and changing nothing else. Following him down, extending the arm a little bit, showing him, yes, reach onto that. Then if, if, if like this happens here now, then you pick up the contact a little bit again, add the leg, pressure it into, pressure him into it just a little bit. Again, we don't want to upset the apple cart here, so we're just taking it very simply. And as soon as he gives in again, we're showing him, okay, that door is open. Softer, softer there. That's right, good, good, excellent, excellent. With the goal of eventually seeing how deep can I get him, how low can I get him to stretch? This is, you know, the first few rides again where, oh, he's very heavy down and wants to lean into the bit. Then I got him, we got him a little bit up again. Now we need to make sure that he wants to, he, he himself wants to push into that contact. He wants to feel that hand there. This takes a little time to develop. Good. As soon as he gives in, softening and going with him. Good. And then the new level, if it's a little bit deeper in that new level, then reestablishing. Take the contact, push a little bit together. They're softer, they're softer. He wanted to go down. Good. So, if this becomes the result now, pushing a little there, pushing a little there, as it's softer, and it happens right away. That's the one thing that, that we as riders have to be good about is being able to find that moment of give. As soon as the aid has accomplished the goal we wanted it to, to be able to soften. The better we get at that, the earlier we realize our gift can be. We had uh, we got one a, a trainer that I rode with when I went to Germany, and we've had him a couple of here, a couple times here for clinics. Um, worked with Michael in the past, not so much as a dressage rider, but when Michael had um, young horses that he wanted wanted broken, some, some things like that. that he just had Mark. He, he, he said something very. Very important. You know that the amateur riders at their best. Good. I can see. Good. The amateur rider at 
done best gives when or after the horse gives. So if the horse does something, they will. You give an aid, the horse responds, the rider gives. Okay? okay. The accomplished professional rider gives in to the horse's gear. So almost like precognition, knowing exactly when they're going to soften and yield to that original aid, the, the aid is already out of there, right? And that's, the, that's a little bit the goal in our timing, to eventually develop something like that. To say, okay, here's my aid, and now already through experience and, and through the knowledge that we've developed, saying, I know that if I already start this give, I can be successful. Now going a little bit back to what I was saying before, was with the hand without leg, like how I want him to start to reach a little bit down on that hand. Every time you push and he, he wants to come a little deeper, we're showing him that that's possible. Okay? <clears throat> the next step is to do the very same thing, but time it so that at the same moment that you're giving the hand, you gently close the leg and tell them to move a little more forward. And the reason that we want to set it up that way is many horses, if they, if, so if, you know, if they haven't been started absolutely correctly, when you come with the leg, what's their tendency? Faster. Well, sure. I meant more with the head carriage, in terms of the head carriage. Yeah, exactly. Coming up. Okay, and that's directly the opposite of what we want from them. So if they make this experience that when they give, the hand is giving. Then they have nothing to worry about. Then. Like, okay, I, I'm used to this. Every time that I relax, I get a reward and my rider relaxes. I'm allowed to, to go a little bit deeper. And then we start associating that with every once in a while, gently adding the leg in that same moment. Then the horse, after several repetitions of that, finds out, well, this isn't so bad. Every time my rider comes with the leg and tells me to step more forward, I'm also, it's in that same moment, moment that I'm relaxing and getting a reward. So why should I react negatively to the driving aid by coming up? You see what I'm getting at here? And that's what the second part of that is called, leg without hand. So the, it's kind of a, a little bit not named properly because you say hand without leg, but what that means is giving of the hand. And now the second part here, leg without hand, means using the leg without while giving with the hand. Later on, it's only after that's been established that we can come then with the leg and contact, or a little stronger contact anyway, or a, a driving aid and a resistive aid at the same time, and have the horse make, make sense of that. Push a little bit more, seed a little bit, leg, into that bridle, so you have a little bit of pressure. That's it, now giving. It's all right, that's the right idea. It has to be in the right timing. As soon as he yields to that pressure, softening and allowing, yes, good there. Good there, excellent. Almost to the point where he wants to start stretching would be the ideal. That he gets that deep, wants to come that low in the frame. Now, if this changes and he starts dragging us down and running straight into the ground, then we're going to change our plan. But for the time being, we need a little push into a half fault because there you go, a little strong for a minute. And then as soon as he yields again to that, we're soft. Good, good, excellent. Excellent, that's a good sign. Super. That's all right. Then just slow him down again. That's okay. That's really good what he did there. That snorting is, is showing that relaxation's coming in a little bit. He's changing his breathing patterns. Going from more shallow breathing to more deeper diaphragm. I don't know if I can say that. Diaphragm. Diaph breathing from the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. They start to relax, they free up in the shoulder a little bit, the back loosens up. That's the whole point of this here. 
Good there, good there. Excellent. Good, now let's come down here. It's, it's the same work here, but let's go on a bit, about a 20 meter circle. Probably inside with that white rail on the ground. He's turning though, he still thinks he was on the rail. Meaning on this side of the light rail? So what, actually, just head back. When I, usually when I say circle, I mean that right. center line okay. is where I want you to start. So all the way around one time. Good. Use your seat a little bit in your posting to slow the tempo for a moment and push a little bit more into contact. Slower. There, that's a little better. All right, now here on the circle. Outside leg a little bit, turn your shoulders with the direction that you're turning, that'll help put him on a turn, good. And it's the same game, if, if he wants to go deeper, stay on the circle, if he wants to go deeper and come down, then we're going to allow that to happen. Now ever so slightly, gradually, with a little left leg at the girth, start bringing his nose around to the left. So we're going to start adding a little inside flexing as well. Very carefully. So already that was an objection. We, we have to be careful there. Do we, is it time to push through that objection or are we just going to play it safe and take the rein a little bit and gently give back? So let's say you take maybe an inch of inside flexion. Give, half, give a centimeter back and then take another inch and then give a centimeter back. So that's taking and giving. Good there. There he wanted to reach a little bit. Go with him. Excellent. Trying, and even as you flex to the inside, not holding stiffly the outside rein, but certainly not letting it loose. Good, a little more flexing. So through the, yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's good. Through the flexing eventually, almost to the point where his nose wants to touch your toe. So take your time. And not that it has to happen immediately. Good. And still even during the flexing. Yes, there. How he wants to go deeper there. Allow that. Yes, super. Gradually soften the flex. Still ride the circle, but pick, pick up again that outside rein. There, good. So, so we feel that balance on the outside. And now gently start lifting him up a little bit again, just to change the program a little bit. Gradually push him back up. Ah, good. Excellent. Squeeze leg seat in half fault, especially on the outside rein. Good. You're all right. Good. And preparing for left lead canter now. And canter. So, all right. Gradually back to the drop. Take your time. Posting again, gradually half off, feeling to settle again. No big deal there. Now again, when we attempt this canter to part, you want to make sure this particular direction that he's yielding a little bit to that left leg, pushing out into the outside rein. So specifically when you ask for the canter, try not to let him fall in or lean in, okay? Left leg, outside rein, and canter. All close, that was closer. Take your time, no worries. Good. And again, take your time in the trot to until he settles back down. This riding now is again like we're riding him a little deeper. Until he settles and comes into the hand. There, good. A little half off, still the temple. 
also the, the in the half halter is not just a pull on the rein, it's from the whole body, a little push of the, of the abdominal muscles and the leg into that contact. Left bending in, left flexing. That's it. Good. Then on, from that left leg and that left flexing into that outside rein. And think from your inside leg. Oh, not yet, not yet. He's a little against it. Left bending again. Think the next time we try it from the inside leg to canter the part. Inside leg and outside ring working together. Yep, that's all right. See what he does though as soon as he wants to canter. I barely move my outside Think Again, think from the inside leg to canter. Inside leg and inside seat though. Not yet. Left leg, now canter. Ah, very good. Excellent. And again, the first thing is new gait, new game. So relax first. And not so relaxed that he breaks to the drop, but trying to just sit a couple rounds and get used to the canter, to not hold too much in front. And then when we start getting getting comfortable again, it's very similar work like the trot. Looking that he goes a little deeper now. Pushes over the back, wants to reach into the hand. So anytime you can push a little bit more into that contact that he gives and goes down, you have to follow him down. Not too bad here, good Nick. And a little bit also when you get that hand in the inside flexing this direction. Good there. Really good there. A little outside apple there. He's getting a little faster now. So you still want him to balance a little bit left leg to right hand. So even as we flex to the inside, that the left leg, the inside leg has the job to push him slightly to the outside hand. A little more, a little more flex. Bring your shoulders, bend your elbow, bring his nose around to the inside. Push into that right ring. 
Good. Now a little more stable and walk. There you go. Good. All the way. Good job. That's okay. Let me take a break from you. Questions or comments? Um, I think even though I still feel like transitions are right, up, at the same time I can feel the steps working and just not working fast. Yeah. You know, but I, think I, I have a harder time on the half hole at the trap than I do the can. It's because it's harder to sit. Yeah. I really have like a second. <laughs> And it's, you know, it's, it's hard to be able to, to sit and, and you sit relaxed, first of all, because most people in their sitting trot already sit much more tight than they do at the canter. Um, and then to be, to give kind of a resistive aid where you have to use some muscle tone. And the trick is to eventually develop where to put that muscle tone and where not to put it. That's much easier said than done. So we'll just let them walk in another moment or so. And then we'll probably change direction. And we continue on the same work in the right. comes out pretty late most of the time because she works at UNO, I believe. Not sure what she does with right her. And uh, you know she she rides in her Versace shuttle but she never never goes anywhere. She just takes a couple lessons here and there. Usually doesn't ride in any of the clinics. Just kinda Well I wonder because I thought Ann Wheeler had said when like when I came Let's change direction. Yeah, so they made a mistake. Well, bring it back, try again. 